The much-anticipated Portal RTX just released today, and oh boy, it's rough. The default settings are horrible as well as the game's performance. So today, I'm going to show you everything you can do to get the best performance and best visuals out of the experience, as well as mitigate motion sickness caused not by flinging through portals, but by the sheer magnitude of fake frames inserted by DLSS 3 to make this game even remotely presentable. I know it sounds already that I'm bashing on Portal RTX a bit harshly for what is essentially a glorified benchmark test, but it is still a game, and I'm sure most of you watching this would like to play it as a game, yes? So let me show you how to make it playable and or the best experience possible. Now before we even open the game, before we even download it in fact, make sure the game is installed on an SSD or NVMe. If you don't have one, that's okay, it's not a deal breaker, but if you don't, it's going to be a little rougher. Now, if you already downloaded it to the wrong drive, don't worry, you don't have to reinstall it. We can just move the install location. I'll show you how. First, open Steam and go to your library and find Portal RTX. Right click and go to Properties, then Local Files, and lastly click Move Install Folder, then select your SSD. Now, if your SSD is not showing up in the drop down menu, that is also easy to fix. In the top right corner, you just click Steam, then Settings. Downloads, Steam Library Folders, and click the plus symbol next to the drives you are using. Then select your SSD as a new Steam Library folder. You should be able to install the game to it now. Just make sure you have good free space and know which drive is your SSD. This is a requirement. You need the latest NVIDIA drivers to even launch the game without crashing. Simply open GeForce Experience, click Drivers, and check for updates. Then choose Express Installation if you do need one. Or Custom, but you're going to want everything in there up to date anyway. Then you'll need to restart your PC. So like, bookmark or favorite this video so you can find it again if you need to perform this step. Next you're going to want to open up NVIDIA Control Panel and go to Manage 3D Settings. Under Global Settings, scroll down to Power Management Mode and change it to Prefer Maximum Performance. Then scroll down to Texture Filtering and change that to High Performance. If you have Shadowplay on, you're going to want to go ahead and turn that off before you get in the game, as trying to do so in the game can cause stutters and crashes in the worst cases. Shadowplay also takes a huge chunk of performance away from this game. Discord and OBS are best to have off, but you can use them so long as you turn hardware acceleration or encoding off. For Discord, go into User Settings, scroll down to Advanced, and turn hardware acceleration to off. For OBS, if you plan on streaming or recording this game, go to Settings, then Output, and change the encoder from Hardware to Software if it isn't set to that already. Make sure any other unnecessary background processes are also stopped. Things running in the background like other games, launchers, web browsers, especially Chrome, and so on. I recommend opening Task Manager and taking a look to make sure apps that you close are actually closed instead of just minimizing. But, and I can't stress this enough, if you don't know what something is, leave it alone. That could introduce so many more problems later. For this, start by hitting the Windows key and finding Power and Sleep Settings. Under Related Settings on the right, click Additional Power Settings and change your preferred plan from Balanced to High Performance. Now that we have done all of that, we can finally launch the game. I know, it's amazing how many things are slowing it down before we even start, right? Now that the game is open, the first thing you want to do is open your options and head over to video. If the resolution is higher than 1080p, you are definitely going to want to lower that. You'll know if it is if, well, you can hardly read anything. Because the game windows still don't scale. Yay! Now I recommend 1080p specifically for introducing the least amount of artifacts in my testing. It also scales well with 4K displays. If you are on a 1440p display and still struggling, 720p scales well, but that's the lowest I would go. 
DLSS is going to make it very blurry lower than that. Also, make sure to have your game running in full screen while you are here. Next, go into Advanced Settings. There's a lot here, but thankfully the game will put a little asterisk next to something that is recommended for the settings of your build if you're confused. One thing I would definitely recommend though is turning Multi-Core Rendering on. I don't know why it's off by default, but it shouldn't be. Turning off V-Sync is also a good idea to make the game feel smoother, but if it introduces serious screen tearing, where the picture on the top is splitting from the picture on the bottom of the screen, then you're going to want to go ahead and turn that back on if it's consistently a problem. Open the DLSS menu with Alt-X, and to start we are going to select Custom on both DLSS 3.0 and Image Quality Settings. This is going to allow us to actually change the settings. Now, we are actually going to turn off DLSS entirely first and load into the game. The frame rate is going to be terrible to start, and that's normal. What we are going to do is look around and mess with the image quality settings to get the natural frame rate as high as we can while still maintaining your preferred visual quality. Here I can't recommend specifics due to differences in PC builds, but play around with this, upping the frame rate as best you can until the visuals start to suffer in a way that you do not like. I can recommend, at least, taking the texture quality off of Ultra and putting it on high. There is practically unnoticeable differences at 1080p, but your frame rate will definitely notice. And to get a better idea of the frame rate that you're actually getting, you're going to want to disable motion blur for this. Once you're comfortable, or it is as good as it's going to get, now select DLSS 3.0 again and turn it back on with at least balanced in super resolution mode. Quality if you can manage it. Everything we just did is to eliminate as many fake frames as possible. The game will play smoother, make users less motion sick, introduce less artifacts, and so on. DLSS 3 is great to have, but it's not magic. The more real frames you have, the better DLSS 3 can do its job without distortion. If after all of that it is still unplayable to you, you can try going below balanced in super resolution mode, but the image quality will drastically start to degrade at that point. Realistically, if you want the visuals to look as good as they do in the trailers, then recommended system requirements should be treated as the minimum system requirements. Bottom line, this game is not easy to run, and at the time of recording this, if you are on an AMD card at all, or anything under an RTX 3060, it is practically impossible. But if you are somewhere within a 3060 to 4090, these tips should have increased your FPS dramatically and maybe even made the difference between being able to play the game and not. I know it did for me. So let me know if this did help and leave a like if it did. I greatly appreciate it. And that's pretty much all I have. Now go out there and enjoy Aperture like you have never seen it before.